Aproveitando o break do seu podcast pra perguntar. Será que você sabe... Quem é ele? Esse tá de rock and roll. Trident apresenta um feat de gerações com Rita Lee e Luísa Sonza. Eu procuro estar por dentro, doutor, dessa nova geração. Mas minha filha não me leva a sério, doutor. Ela fica cheia de mistério com esse tal de rock and roll. Quando terminar seu podcast, já aproveita pra ouvir esse feat aqui no Spotify. Trident no Rock in Rio 40 anos. Masca e destrava seu rock and roll. It's Sunday Showcase, your weekly release of brand new audio drama from the United Artists of Audio right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. Soul Twin Audios. Stories created solely with the vintage soul in mind. Modern day era driving you up a wall. Time travel not likely in your future? Then follow me for a healthy offering of yesteryear with old time radio theater. Your remedy for unwanted 21st century pain. Good evening. This is Dean T. Moody, host of Old Time Radio Theater. Tonight, Soul Twin Audios brings you a very special recreation of Suspenses Twas the Night Before Christmas, starring Katie Denhart and Taylor Jackson. Kathy, it's the day before Christmas. Oh, and there's so much. Oh, Miss Buff, it's light out already. You said you were going to wake me up really early today so we could go to the airport and meet them. Come on, up you get. Let's get you dressed. Buffy, they're going to be waiting for me and you didn't wake me up. I know what. <laughs> they're home already. Kathy. Mommy. Daddy. Where are you? Daddy! Mommy! Buffy, they're not in their bedroom. Where are they? I know. I bet they're in the kitchen already having their coffee. <laughs> Mom? Miss Buff, they're not home. I know, honey. The clock in the kitchen said 8.30. Kathy, here. Put this on, dear. You told me you wanted to wear this dress today. That's why I ironed it for you. Miss Buff? Yes, dear. Why aren't they here? Oh, they'll be here. But when I talked to Mommy on the telephone yesterday, she said she would be here at 6 this morning, and I promised her I'd meet her at the airport, her and Dad. I know. And Daddy said he had a surprise he was bringing for me all the way from Paris. It's 8.30, Buffy. Let's go out to the airport now. Oh, but there's so many things to do first. You've got to get your breakfast, and we have to finish decorating the tree, and, uh, oh, there's so many things I want you to help me with. Oh, everything can wait, Buffy. Hurry, I promised to meet them. No, dear. Why not, Buff? Well, I think we'll wait for them here. Kathy? Yes? Do you remember when you promised your mommy and dad that you'd do everything I asked you while they were away? Yes. Then let's wait for them here. Hmm? All right, Buffy. Don't you think they might have called and told us they'd be late? Oh, I'll go and make our lunch. 
You must be very hungry. No, I'm not. But you didn't eat your breakfast, Kathy. Miss Buff, I'm not hungry. Look! Oh, look! It's snowing, honey! We'll have a nice warm lunch, and then we'll go out for a long walk, hmm? I should have called. Tell you what, Kathy. We'll take our walk first. We'll see the shops. We'll visit. We'll go and see Johnny and your aunt and uncle. Maybe if it snows hard enough, we can all build a snowman. Would you like that? Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> well, go get your coat and hat and galoshes. All right. And when we come back, Mommy and Daddy will be home. Well, you go and get your things now. Oh, I'll get it. I'll get it, Buffy. Mommy! Oh, uh, who is this? Daddy? Is, um... Oh, from the newspaper? I see. It's a man buff. He says he wants to talk to an older person. Here. Hello? Yes, this is the Harper residence. I'm the housekeeper. I... Well, just a moment, please. Who is it? Someone wants to talk to me, honey. Will you go get your things? No. Who are you talking to, Buffy? Never mind, dear. Go and get your things. No. No, I won't. Hello? I... I see. Yes, yes, I saw the papers. Yes, yes, that was the daughter. Yes, the only child. No, she doesn't. No! No, no, I wish you wouldn't. Please don't. Here. No! Who was he? Oh, just a man, honey. He was from the newspapers. Why? What do you want? Nothing. He asked about me, didn't he? Why? Honestly, honey, it was nothing. It was about Mommy and Daddy. Oh, it wasn't anything important. Buff? Yes, dear? I... I don't know. Look at that snow coming down, Kathy. Get your things, dear. Go on. Na 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 well, thank you. Thank you, Miss. Merry Christmas. Let's go home now. In a little while. Don't you remember? We were going visiting, too. Hmm. Buff, Mommy and Daddy are probably home right now waiting for me and wondering where I am. And we'll build a snowman together like I said. Come on, honey. I remember when I was a little girl how excited I'd get. Oh, and all the wonderful things to see. The sights and the smells and the sounds. The pretty shop windows in the snow. To be a little girl at Christmas time. To be young at Christmas time. And happy and. What's the matter, Buffy? Oh, Kathy. Buffy? Let me hold you. Oh, Kathy, darling. Buffy, you're crying. I'm just silly, I guess. Oh, look, there's Santa Claus watching us. <laughs> Let's say hello to him. You were crying. Hello, Santa. Merry Christmas, and Merry Christmas, little girl. Merry Christmas. Why, you're a pretty little girl. What's your name? Kathy. Ah, oh, that's a nice name for a nice little girl like you. Thank you. And I can tell you've been a good little girl. I saw the way your mommy was holding you. She's Miss Buff. My mommy's away. Daddy, too. But we're taking a walk to make them come home. Oh, and where are they? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Thank you.
Kathy. Oh, Kathy, come in, darling. And Miss Buff, how are you? Come in, come in. Mother, mother, guess who's here? <gasps> Why, it's Kathy and Miss Buff. Hello, Aunt Margaret. Hello, Mrs. Cleveland. Take your things off. We've got a big fire in the living room, and wait till you see our Christmas tree, Kathy. I'm sure it's very beautiful. I'll bet Kathy came to see her cousin Johnny, didn't she? <laughs> yes, I did, Uncle Ted. I would like to see him very much. Do you know what that boy of mine did, Miss Buff? No. We found the trains. Oh, he did? After I took so much trouble to hide them out in the garage, he found them. Oh, uh, so, of course, I had to set them up for him. Well, it's the day before Christmas. Uh, he's in his room now, Kathy. Yes. <laughs> I would like to play with the trains. Well, of course you would. And Johnny? I can't come out, Daddy. I'm busy. Kathy's here. Hey, come up and play with my trains, Kathy. You ought to see. I got him all hitched up now. Go on, Kathy. All right. I've been on the phone since 7 this morning, Miss Buff. There just hasn't been any word at all about the plane. Look, look, look! A man from the newspaper called the house. I told him to stay away. Does the child know? <laughs> I... I think she does. What did you tell her? Nothing. How do you tell a child, Mrs. Cleveland? Look it, look it, go! What I can't understand is why no word at all. The plane took off from Paris, and there was radio contact over Ireland from what I could find out. But since then, nothing. You'd better tell her, Ted. Tell me what? Well, uh, there was a storm over the ocean. A pretty bad storm, they said. Miss Buff? Yes, darling? I just figured out something. It's about Mommy and Daddy. Oh, Kathy. They're not coming home. They're not ever coming home. And now, we bring back to our soundstage Katie Denhart in our production of Twas the Night Before Christmas, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. <laughs> it's going to be good to get inside the house, Kathy. Oh, look at you. You look almost like the snowman you and Johnny built. Here, let me brush you off a bit before we go inside. There's a man there. What do you say, darling? Right there, standing by the door. A man. Hello. Good evening, miss. Hello, little girl. This your house? Uh, yes. I live here. Who are you? What do you want? Well... Then you'd be the Harper's little girl, wouldn't you? Um, yes. I asked you, who are you? Now, don't worry about it, ma'am. I just want to take a picture of the little girl. Do you want your picture taken, little girl? Buffy. You're the reporter I talked to this morning, aren't you? Here, get in the house, Kathy. Don't stand there, dear. Get in the house. I'll be in in a moment. It's Christmas Eve, Mr. Reporter. Did you know that? Uh, now, look, ma'am. I've got a job to do. It's Christmas Eve. Where's your heart? Now, look, you gotta understand. I talked to you on the phone. It was almost ten hours ago. Before noon. It's nighttime already. There, there still isn't any word about the plane. And I represent a newspaper, ma'am. We've got to assume... Well, you know I don't want to say it any more than you do. Oh, just go away! Oh, now, really, I, I gotta... Were you... Were you ever lonely on Christmas Eve? Alone in a house that's empty? 
while outside other people were singing, where there was warmth and love and joy, but outside? I'm just trying to do my job. Christmas Eve! The snow is falling. Christmas Eve, and a child is grieving. Yeah, Uh, I'm sorry. Good night, ma'am. I'm in the living room, Buffy. I just had a wonderful thought. Yes? Let's have a secret. (laughs) What, Buffy? Let's not wait until tomorrow. What do you mean? We'll go to our tree and open up some of our presents now. Maybe just one. Hmm? Choose the one with the most beautiful wrapping. You can open it and you can play with it now while I go and fix something for you to eat. I'm not hungry, Buff. Honestly, I'm not. Well, just some milk and cookies, honey. You haven't eaten since... Oh, all right. Well then, let's choose. Go ahead. Pick one. All right. That one. Mm Mm-hmm. It's from Mr. and Mrs. Anderson next door. Open it. You open it, Buffy. Very well. Oh, look! It's very nice. A carousel. Well, I'll wind it for you. And we'll put it down here. Now, you watch it. When it runs down, you can wind it up again. I'm going into the kitchen. Kathy, here's your... Kathy. Kathy, honey, where are you? Kathy, your milk and cookies are on the table. Kathy? Are you in your room, Kathy? Kathy? Kathy, honey? Kathy! Why, Miss Buff? Mr. Anderson, is Kathy here? Well, why no? Is, uh, is anything wrong? Well, would you mind asking Mrs. Anderson if Kathy's here? Maybe she came in through the back way. Well, Miss Anderson and I have been sitting in the living room for the last hour. Why, what's the matter? Uh, Kathy ran out of the house. Oh, poor child. I can imagine how she must feel. I thought she I might have come over here next door. She ran out of the house. I don't know where she is. <laughs> I don't know where she is. Poor child like that. And this happened to her today. <sighs> Wait. I'll get my coat. Paul! Paul! Want a sled ride, Miss Buff? Paul, listen. Oh, hi, Mr. Anderson. Want a ride? I'm going all the way down the hill for three blocks. The guy. Paul, have you seen Kathy? Sure. Well, where is she? I don't know. Where is she, Paul? Where did she go? How am I supposed to know where she went? But you saw her, <laughs> didn't you? Sure, she was running down the block. I yelled at her to come on over, but she kept running. Which way, Paul? Down there, I guess, where the stores are. Thank you, Paul. Sure. Merry Christmas, Mr. Anderson. Merry Christmas, Miss Buff. Hey, watch! Well, she hasn't been in my store, Miss Buff, and I'm the only one on the block who's open. Last minute Christmas rush, you know. Thank you, Mr. Ruxt. Say now, that kid and what happened to that plane today? I'd sure let the police know she was missing. I think he's right, Miss Buff. Call them, please. 
Call them. Oh, uh, use this phone, Mr. Anderson. Thank you. Hello, operator? Give me the police. Hello, police? Yeah, I, I want to report a little girl who's missing. Uh-huh. Kathy Harper. Well, she's got blonde hair, uh, blue eyes, and, uh... Oh, wait a second. Yeah, I'll, I'll find out. Now you just go in the house, Miss Buff. I'm sure they'll find her. It's ten o'clock. They've been looking for three hours. Oh, they have ways. They'll find her. We waited in that station house. All the policemen who phoned in, none of them. And you just go in the house now. Okay? I'll send Mrs. Anderson over. No, no really. I'd rather you wouldn't. Well... Good night, Mr. Anderson. And thank you. I'm Patrolman Reed, ma'am. You found Kathy? Yes, ma'am. Where is she? You'd better come with me, ma'am. There she is, ma'am, in the second pew. Oh, Kathy, child. Christmas Eve. Church should have been the first place we should have looked for that kid. Kathy, let's go home now, darling. All right. There we are, all tucked in. It's almost Christmas, isn't it? Yes, darling. Are you going to read to me? Well, of course. You just lie there. Buffy? Yes, darling? Nothing. Just read to me. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down for a long winter's nap. And out on the lawn, there arose such a clatter. I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window, I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw open the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When, what to my wondering eyes should appear, but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. 
now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. Buffy! Oh dear lord. <gasps> Mommy! Kathy baby! Daddy! Oh, Merry Christmas, Kathy. <laughs> hey, hey, it's Christmas. We don't cry on Christmas. I, I... Oh, baby, baby. Hey, how about a big hug for me? Oh, Daddy. Oh, that's my girl. Where's Miss Buff? I was in bed. She was reading to me. <laughs> Bed's the place for you. Come on, I'll carry you. Buff! It's Mommy! It's Daddy! I know, darling. I know. Hello, Buffy. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, Buff. We had to make an emergency landing in Newfoundland. Small field, communications were shot. That storm was... Yes. Yes, let's not talk about it anymore. Buffy was reading me a wonderful thing about the night before Christmas. Here, I'll put you in bed, Kathy. There. There you are. Read it to us, Buffy. Hmm? To all of us. Oh, uh, well, I, uh, I, I, I lost my place. <laughs> I read it, Buffy. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with a sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkle I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back and looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses. His nose, like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow. And the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth. And the smoke... It encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf. And I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down on a thistle. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night.
'Twas the Night Before Christmas was originally written for suspense by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, airing on December 24, 1951. The special holiday episode was recreated by Rachel Pulliam and Katie Denhart for Soul Twin Audio's Old Time Radio Theater and starred Katie Denhart as Miss Buffy, Taylor Johnson as Kathy, Caleb Bressler as the reporter, Ed Bjorndal as the beggar, Glenn Haskell as Santa Claus, Joe Stofko as the uncle, Sharon Grunwald as the aunt, Rigby Denhart as Johnny, Adam Merciano as Mr. Anderson, Pete Lutz as Paul, Paul Arbizi as Mr. Ruxt, Dean T. Moody as the policeman, Bethany Baldwin as the mom, and Adam Blanford as the dad. The suspense theme was originally composed by Bernard Herrmann and reimagined by David Krause with incidental music and sound effects by freesound.org. I'm your host, Dean T. Moody, wishing you all a very merry holiday. This is Jack Ward, and on behalf of everyone here at the Mutual Audio Network, we wish you, your family, and all your friends safe harbor during these difficult times.